Earlier this week, Pfizer submitted data to Health Canada asking it to approve its vaccines for use in kids age 5 to 11. While adults have been getting vaccinated for a while, bringing kids into the fold will be new. To get some advice on how people can talk about this with their kids, we've reached out to an expert. Allison Kelvin is a virologist at the Vaccine and Infection Disease Organization, or VEDO, in Saskatoon. She is also a member of the World Health Organization's Committee on the SARS-CoV-2 Vaccine Design. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So first off, this isn't necessarily something kids can even choose for themselves. Parents will have to consent for this age group. The parents that are on board, they're already on board. But what would you say to those who may be unsure about letting their kids get the shot? Yeah, well, it's a great question. I think starters, it's really exciting because basically kids have been left out of our priorities during this pandemic. You know, they were thought of last in our priority list. So having vaccines for kids is really important. One, um, by vaccinating children, we're stopping the chain of transmission. So if, you, if kids aren't being infected, then they're not able to pass along the virus. We know that kids typically develop less severe disease or COVID-19 than adults, but they still can develop severe COVID-19. So as they're able to be infected, um, vaccinating them will prevent severe disease. It will prevent um, other conditions as well that kids are known to be susceptible to after being infected. This includes multi-inflammatory system in children. So it's a syndrome that happens in kids after they're infected with SARS-CoV-2 and causes inflammation throughout the body. And then lastly, kids are also susceptible to long COVID. So we know that from su some studies, kids, about 10% of kids who recover from COVID-19 may experience symptoms for months after being infected. So for all these reasons, the possibility of severe disease and other conditions, as well as being able to transmit the virus to other vulnerable people, such as older people, it's really important that we start vaccinating children so that they can get back to what is important to them, their regular activities, which is important for their development. Some parents are concerned that enough kids haven't actually been vaccinated to call this a successful trial. You work with the World Health Organization. What are your thoughts on the data? Uh, so I'm very encouraged by the safety profile of the vaccine in kids and that uh, in the immunogenicity looks similar to what kids are, what kids had received compared to older age groups. So their antibody profiles, even though children in this trial received a smaller dose of vaccine, their antibodies, which will protect them from disease and infection, were um, brought to similar levels as kids between 16 and 25. If your child has already had COVID, do they still need to be vaccinated? So right now, um, the advice that's been being given throughout the world is that if you have had COVID and been infected with SARS-CoV-2, you should still be vaccinated for COVID-19. There are several reasons for this. First is that your immune response after having and recovering from COVID-19 is variable. So the virus might not always lead to productive, protective antibodies after infection. And what we've seen is that people who have recovered from COVID-19 and become vaccinated have higher levels of protective antibodies and antibodies that are also kind of superpowered. They're able to protect against other variants better. So the advice right now is if you recovered from COVID-19, go ahead and get your COVID-19 vaccine. Bring the science down to like an elementary school level for me so people can explain this to their kids. How does the mRNA vaccine work? So a really great question. Um, of course, the intricacies really uh, revolve around our basic biology. And that's at the center of ourselves, we have uh, center of our cells, we have DNA. And DNA is basically the information um, for our genes, which makes up who we are. And in between our information and 
our protein, which is the build the pieces that build us, is an intermediate, a middle piece called mRNA. And this is kind of the transfer, the transforming instructions um, that tells our cells how to make things. So basically what happened for the mRNA vaccines is that we um, researchers took this instruction, so the mRNA, coded it for a piece of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And when we get our vaccine, we get the mRNA for the piece of the SARS-CoV-2. And this gives our cells instruction to make a piece of the virus. And then we have special cells within, inside ourselves that will learn what this piece looks like so that it can develop responses to protect us if we actually come into contact with the virus. Some kids just don't like needles. Fight or flight, you're a mom too. Any advice for those who feel like they'd have to sit on their child to get them vaccinated? Well, I actually, I have a child that I had to sit on for some of her previous vaccines, not the COVID-19 vaccine. But what I've seen with her, she specifically is afraid of needles. What I've seen with her is that she was super excited when it was her turn to get her COVID-19 vaccine. She was only 11 when she got it, but the day that she found out she was able to get it, she was first in line. So what I think is that kids right now, you know, they see the benefit of this and we have to give them credit for that. They know how they've been affected by the pandemic. And if you have a child like mine who really doesn't want needles and still doesn't want the COVID-19 vaccine, um, there's many reasons that you can discuss for getting the vaccine with them, such as protecting you as the parent by your children getting vaccinated. It helps protect you from severe disease as well as other people that you love. Ice cream helps too. <laughs> Thank you so much for this, Allison. Thanks so much. Allison Kelvin is a virologist at Vito in Saskatoon.